Welcome to Inside the Nation podcast. I'm your host, Eric Thoreau, and this is our second season, episode one, debuting for the 2017 Arena Football League season. Coming up for this episode, we will be taking a look back at week one review for the games of the Baltimore Brigade and Washington Valor, the Tampa Bay Storm at the Cleveland Gladiators, and the Philadelphia Soul. So, and then also we'll be looking at um, who won week one awards and then take a, a preview at what to expect for week two. So let's begin the show. Starting off with, let's review the first game of the year, which was actually the fir- not only the first game of the year, but also the first game for both of these franchises. The expansion Baltimore Brigade traveled just 30 miles just to go to Washington, D.C. and take on Washington Valor. The two teams are actually owned by the same company, Monumental Sports and Entertainment, and their chairman, Ted Leonsis. The Baltimore Brigade are led by head coach Omar Smith, who was more, most recently with the Los Angeles Kiss this past, the last year, and the Washington Valor are led by head coach Dean Cotinos, who was most recently with the Tampa Bay Storm and a, as an assistant coordinator. The game took place this past Friday at the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C., and the game led off right off what we expected because of the, we could say, a more prepared team in the Washington Valor as they had a whole season to prepare and get their team organized and built while the Baltimore Brigade basically only had roughly around four months to build a team. So... You can expect that the Valor would come out of the gates shooting and running on all cylinders for what you can expect of a franchise expansion franchise. Um, You can expect a lot of miscues to happen, a lot of nervousness for the other franchise, the Baltimore Brigade, to start off. And that's exactly what happened as the game started out with a 20-0 lead by the Washington Valor in front of the Washington's ninth man. Key moments in the game were Washington's very first touchdown reception by Mike Washington, a.k.a. Joystick, in the corner of the end zone as thrown to him by Eric Meyer, the 2015 league MVP and Arena Bowl champion from the San Jose Sabercats. Eric Meyer comes off of not playing in 2016, but he was instead coaching his brother's football team down in Southern California and is coming back to try to fire on all cylinders and he did just that as he completed the game as MVP of the game and led the Valor 27 to 0 game opening run and finished completing 21 of 31 passes for 237 yards and four touchdowns in a victory to open up the Valor to 1 and 0 on the season therefore the brigade fell to 0 and 1 on the season Key mo- notes in the game also for the Baltimore Brigade is that their first franchise touchdown reception was caught by big play Reggie Gray, who last season played with the Jacksonville Sharks and prior to that was a- an Arena Bowl all-arena player for the San Jose Sabercats back in 2015. The final score of the game was Washington Valor 51, Baltimore Brigade 38. The f- key... Winners of the game for honorable mentions, offensive player of the game, Baltimore quarterback Shane Carden completed 21 of 32 passes for 197 yards and three touchdowns to go along with two rushing touchdowns. The defensive player of the game was to Washington Valor's defensive back, Tracy Belton, tallied nine total tackles to go along with two interceptions. MVP of the game, like I said, was Washington Valor quarterback, Eric Meyer, who led the team uh, to an opening start of 27-0 before the brigade were able to get on the board and completed 21-31 passes for 237 yards and four touchdowns in their victory. In a post-game meeting, Washington Valor head coach Dean Coquinos had this to say on the game's atmosphere. It was loud and a lot of electricity in the building. On the team, he said, you can see the toughness in our guys and went and what they bring to this community. We are very proud to be here with the Washington Valor. On his expectations of the game, it's almost since 
a years that I have been here. This was our plan to come out the gate and present a product of what this league can be. I'll tell you what, this was playoff atmosphere. It was pretty exciting. On his team's reaction to Baltimore's game plan, he said, They chose to do a lot of man coverage tonight, and Mike Washington is a special player. Trying to match up one-on-one with him is very hard. We just took advantage of that, and Eric Meyer had some pinpoint throws to him. They both had a big night. Collectively, the whole group played well. Washington Valley quarterback stated this on the crowd. It was an exciting game. The crowd was live. I think they said about 15,000 people, so it was loud in there. They were just as much a part of the win as we were. So it was an awesome it was awesome to be in the front of the home crowd, live, loud, and it was an exciting win. On the rivalry, Eric Meyer says, when I first got out here, people who didn't know too much about the AFL were saying, you better beat the brigade. You guys better beat Baltimore. So you can kind of sense the rivalry between the two cities going on. Obviously, it showed a little bit on the field being competitive out there. Both teams just trying to win and do what they can, but unfortunately, they got the short end of the stick. Now, for the um, Baltimore Brigade, head coach Omar Smith had this on his team's performance for the night. We, as a team and as a coaching staff, talked about players coming out and playing with a little bit more energy, but at the end of the day, we lost, and that's not our expectation, so we weren't good enough today. On making in-game adjustments, he, Omar Smith stated, "Well, we were down 34 to six, and in this game, if you're down 34 to six and you can't move offensively, that's a problem. If you have a problem as a head coach, you have to find a way to fix that problem." Baltimore Brigade wide receiver Reggie Gray on the team's performance: "We can't start off like that. I understand that." There were nerves, first game ever. We have a young quarterback and young players on the offensive side. I have to do a better job of getting my guys ready, a better job of breaking down film, and we just can't start off like that. You just can't get down 30-something to 6. I mean, it's arena football. Anything can happen, but you can't put your, your defense in situations like that. I just have to do a better job of getting the offense ready. The final announced tenants in the Verizon Center for Valor Nation and Washington's ninth man was 15,759, which you may not show because they also have a lot of people standing, a few hundred people standing on either side of the end zones in the, 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 the VIP section that the Valor have set up for exclusive, you know, ex- in-game experience as part of their way of uh, treating to the Washington's ninth man to a, a game day experience that one cannot experience anywhere else in outdoor sports so with that said next week the washington valor actually have a bye week and then the baltimore brigade travel to cleveland to take on the cleveland gladiators which makes perfect sense now let's make um, the transition to the gladiators as they actually hosted the tampa bay storm for week one in their their season debut the at the queue in front of cleveland's ninth man and cleveland is very dedicated, loyal fans out there, and they do know how to get loud for their uh, gladiators. However, the Cleveland Gladiators would fall short in their home debut in front of 12,865 fans at Quicken Loans Arena by losing to the Tampa Bay Storm 46-40. to The game started off very slow. As you can tell, that this was the first game for both teams, the Storm and the Gladiators, for the 2017 season. So you would expect some cobwebs and some dust and need to be shaken off as nerves and and getting to know your new teammates as both teams have a, a, a brand new ro- set of rosters there's some returning players but there's a lot of new faces on both teams and to to bury off the um the dust it was it took a little bit of time for people to do that and to settle in the team for the both teams the players and they finally got to things rolling in the second half is when scoring started going um two games Key notes of the game were defensive back Rashawn Kaiser made his first interception of the season by picking off Hippiard in the first quarter. Former Ohio State kicker Drew Bezel made his rookie debut with Cleveland, making good on all four of his extra point attempts on the evening. Jack linebacker Terrence Moore led the defense in tackles with eight and a half sacks or eight and a half tackles. Defensive lineman Nick Scyther and Daryl Cato Bishop each picked up their first sack 
of the season. Bishop also forced a fumble. Defensive lineman Willie McGinnis made his first career reception in in the third quarter, a five-yard catch. Some um, post-game awards went to the MVP of the game. It was Randy Hippier from Tampa Bay Storm. He went 22 for 31 passing, 205 yards, six touchdowns. Offensive player of the game went to Tampa Bay wide receiver standout Joe Hills. Seven receptions, 53 yards, three touchdowns. Defensive player of the game, season Caesar Rayford of the Tampa Bay Storm. He had four tackles, two tackles for a loss, one and a half sacks, one forced fumble, and one interception and one defensive touchdown. The Tampa Bay Storm will return back to uh, the Amelie Arena in Tampa, Florida to host the reigning Arena Bowl champion Philadelphia Soul next week. And this will be the game of the week broadcasted on CBS Sports Network live at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, while the Cleveland Gladiators will stay home in front of Cleveland's ninth man to host the expansion Baltimore Brigade. And this game can be streamed live on AFL Live on arenafootball.com. So let's take a look at some of the Week 1 award winners. And the, uh, coming from the, as announced by the Arena Football League, they announced that Washington Valor's Mike Washington and the Tampa Bay Storm's Caesar Rayford have been announced as the Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week for Week 1, respectively. Offensive Player of the Week, Mike Washington, he's 5'8", 180 pounds out of Hawaii, was impressive in his debut with the Washington Valor, who are now 1-0 in their 51-38 victory over the Baltimore Brigade and earned Playmaker of the Game honors. Now in his seventh season, he hauled in nine passes for 112 yards and three touchdowns, including the franchise's first ever touchdown early in the first quarter. Only one week into the season, Washington is tied for second with nine receptions and fourth among all receivers averaging 12.4 yards per reception. Now on the other side of the ball, the defensive player of the week, Caesar Rayford, six foot seven inches, 275 pounds out of Washington, began the 2017 campaign with a noticeable stat line in Tampa Bay's 1-0, now 46-40 win over the Cleveland Gladiators, earning Defensive Player of the Game honors. The former Washington Husky recorded four, four tackles, two tackles for a loss, one and a half sacks, forced fumble, intercepted a pass, and returned it for a four-yard touchdown. The interception return for a touchdown was the first score of the game, and only points scored in the first quarter. He is currently tied for second in the AFL with one and a half sacks. So let's take a look now at the um, week two preview. As I uh, probably already previously stated in the earlier segment of the week one review, Baltimore Brigade, who are now 0-1, will stay on the road at Cleveland Gladiators, who are also 0-1. So finally, one of those two franchises will get their first victory for hashtag AFL30, the 2017 season. The game takes place at the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland on Saturday, April 15th and at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. That's 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and will be streamed on arenafootball.com as part of AFL Live. Now traveling down to Florida, Tampa Bay's ninth man will welcome their now undefeated Tampa Bay Storm to Amelie Arena and they will host the defending Arena Bowl champion Philadelphia Soul, who have yet to play their game. So this will be their first game of the 2017 campaign. Uh, this goes down also Saturday, April 15th at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And this, this game will be the game of the week broadcasted nationally on CBS Sports Network. And just to let you know, you can now, in selected markets, in the top five markets, you can now... Get YouTube TV, and you can watch this game streamed on YouTube TV um, on CBS Sports Network. So there's only five networks. You just go to tv.youtube.com and to check to see. I know it's New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, and the San Francisco Bay Area are the main markets. Um, so if you're in those areas, you can now stream um, CBS Sports Network on YouTube TV. Uh, um, also check your local listing just to find out where CBS Sports Network is available on your carrier outside of the streaming. 
just go to cbssportsnetwork.com and then the top right corner, just type in your zip code and it will search for the channels of the local carriers in your area. Now, I want to mention that this has been the first episode in our second season of Inside the Nation podcast. This is going to be one of our shorter, more concise episodes as we develop this podcast for them and get our guests. We expect, um, I expect to get coaches from the teams. I expect to get a few players here and there. I also get expect media outlets and insiders from each of the teams to come back and report on the show. Also, I'll try to get the commissioner on, on again, as I did last year. And some also maybe some of the ownership of some of the teams to come on and have a conversation. And most importantly, I want to have the ninth man nation, you know, some fans from each of the teams on this podcast. Uh, one speculation we want, or actually one note we can say is that the Washington's ninth man is coming out strong and trying to represent a team, try to get the team exposure and try to get people involved in going to their games at the Verizon center. And there's three fans there that have, started their own podcast and are, is being recognized by the team and it's called the valor hour you could check them out they're on itunes and soundcloud and overcast and just go check it out go to itunes and search for the valor hour um, they've done three episodes so far and they are getting into things and they're learning the ways with the arena football league um, as they're new to the league so but they do a great job and they just and the whole point of this is just to get the league exposure um and to get it to grow because uh, this is um football that we all have fallen in love over the past 30 years for myself I've been involved um with the league since 2000 I was a season ticket holder with the San Jose SaberCats um haven't missed a game I was a season ticket holder for 15 years 2000 to 2015 I went to a few road games on the on over the times, most of my road games were spent going to the the rival games against the Arizona Rattlers, who are also known the league, and they're now they're they're an indoor football team playing in the IFL. So, with that said, that's what I'm a little bit about. Uh, I transitioned to start this Ninth Man Nation and fully launch it last year. We had some great conversations, some great guests to give, I guess, awareness and experience factors to this league and to this game of arena football that we love. So if this is your, if, especially if you're in the Washington area, Baltimore area, if this is, if you're what listening to this, this is your first time going to games, uh, Baltimore first game is going to actually be in May as they're trying to allow to get the arena set up a little more time since they've only been around for like a little over four months. Um, so listen to some of the past um, shows that I've done for last year. Um, you can listen to our shows on any and numerous of, um, podcast hosts we are on soundcloud we're on spreaker we're on stitcher we're on google play music we're on tune in radio we're on overcast we're on itunes we're on youtube so you could go to any of those formats whatever you have and you can download and, and listen to the app and listen to on your your mobile device your tablet you can visit onto your computer whatever on your streaming media platform you can listen on to um apple tv whatever um medium that you have you can listen to via sonos so we're we're available we made our podcast available to everybody you can also come to our official website which is ninthmannation.net that's the number nine t-h-m-a-n nation.net or you can do ninthmannation.com either or and then our youtube channel is where you can subscribe we will be coming up with some videos we're working on hopefully to have this inside the nation podcast to be transferred over to becoming a video show. Um, hopefully by the, the postseason, if not, we'll start during the off season. And so you can subscribe just to get ready for that, um, that transition that will be happening at our YouTube channel. Once again, that's at ninth TV. That will take you straight to our YouTube channel. Um, so go there, subscribe to our channel there just to prepare. And you can follow us on a whole bunch of medium, social media outlets, uh, we're all there. The name, you know, the names, Facebook page, Google Plus page, Twitter, Instagram. We're also on, um, what do you call it, Snapchat. How can you forget Snapchat? But basically, that's it. This is going to be a, a, a shorter, more concise podcast. I apologize if you probably were expecting more. 
I'm possibly going to be in communication to my co-host from last year and see if we can work out a more normal schedule. I try to want to get these uh, re- these podcasts released on Wednesdays, hopefully, but we'll see what our schedule is. He has relocated uh, closer to San Francisco, which is quite a commute for either of us to go up there. Um, so we'll we'll see about that. Tom Jones, uh, I want to have him come back. He adds a a very interesting part to his experience and his experience with the Arena Football League and his conversation piece and questions that he asked for other fans and members of the league. So, so once again, my name is Eric Thoreau. I'm the host of Inside the Nation. Um, our website is ninthmannation.net. You can reach us there. Uh, we will look to have a lot more interesting conversation. And the main purpose of this podcast was to create conversation and to bring positive exposure to this league that we love. It is a fun, outgoing league. Uh, the fans deserve the best. We, I know things are in transition right now with the league going down to five-member teams. Uh, I will discuss a little bit more about that on our next episode next week. I Hopefully, maybe I can meet up with Tom and try to get him on. I will also try to see if I can get a guest on. I don't have a guest list as of yet. This was actually a last-minute thing to come up with the podcast today. Um, or by the time you get this, it'll be actually tomorrow. I'm recording this on a Wednesday evening, almost Thursday morning. So that's basically it. So just subscribe and follow us on our podcast channel. Is whatever it says to do on the on the medium that you have to do to follow us to get the latest podcast right served to your phone or to your device. And with that said, I'm Eric Thoreau. This is the first episode of Inside the Nation podcast for the 2017 season, and we'll see you, or I'll see you, next week.